Bill Gates is not born again. Mark Zuckerberg is not born again. Oh my God, you didn't hear what I said. Oh. Jesus said, if you cannot release money for the work of God, who will give you true riches? But money is not true riches. It is the blessing of God that make a man rich. Not money. If you can be faithful to God with little money, you can provoke blessing with it. Oh, stand on your feet. If I'm required, let me stop. Say, neighbor, God wants to bless you. But you must provoke the atmosphere. You have to provoke it. Go see no more. You know, more of man over there. Oh, one, you know, yeah. I got you like a oil pencil. Men that serve Satan, they sacrifice too much. If we sacrifice one tenth of what those that serve Satan sacrifice, the church will take over the world. Talk to me, somebody here. Come. Mistake. When it is time for them to kill a cow, they will do what? They kill a cow. When it's time for them to sacrifice blood, they do what? They sacrifice blood. Election is coming. Election is coming. Those who give babies, babies will start disappearing. Oh, you didn't hear me. Oh. Those who, who give human parts, male and female, will start disappearing here and there. Can you do that? One man became a multimillionaire. Why? He made sacrifice to demons. Let me tell you, Satan can give money. Satan can give money. Satan can give money. Ask me how. Ask me how. Satan said to Jesus, when Jesus was being tempted, Satan did like this and showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the earth with their wealth. Satan said, All this is mine. I can give it to anybody I, I like. Jesus, if you bow down and worship me, all this wealth and their glory, I'll give it to you. If you worship Satan, he can give you money. I'm telling you. But the only difference is that he will add sorrow. Because the blessings of God make it rich. I know so. But if Satan bless you, you cannot pay, man. Because nothing goes for nothing with Satan. You will pay. Pay through your nose. Satan controls wealth and he gives it to his subjects. So this man was told, let the pregnancy your wife is carrying bring the pregnancy to the place of sacrifice. When the woman gave, gave birth, without washing the blood, put the child in this mortar and pound. They can go any length to serve their God. They took the baby, put and what? And pounded. The baby was crying. Newborn baby. The man and the wife were pounded. You know the pain in childbirth. They were pounding. Because they did wickedness for Satan. Satan allowed them to operate in wealth on earth. If Satan can give wealth, God can give better. Anything Satan can give, God can give better. Am I communicating here? But you must obey the principle. Just the way those who serve Satan will obey their, his principles. Am I communicating here? During my birthday this year, you people gave me wristwatches, very, very fine ones costly ones i got eight i have finished sharing it i have finished sharing it and as i share they come as i share they come between my birthday and now i've shared 22 i'm not lying so i'm now a wristwatch distributor anything you are willing to give will be willing to follow you around if you are willing to give money, money will follow you everywhere you go. I entered the plane to go and preach in Dubai. I, no, we have not entered plane. We are still at the uh, departure hall in Lagos. One man ran to me and said, Hey! You! I have been looking for you. I said, here am I. Send me. Can I have your account number? I gave him. As we were boarding Emirates for Dubai, he came to my seat and emptied a particular account into my account. He said to me, 
as we land in dubai i will take you to where you are going make you comfortable so that i will prosper he closed a particular account in there inside emirates i got the alert he said what did you just do i said i just became a rich man He said to me, I almost died. It was your teaching that saved my life. I said, how? He said, I became sick and I couldn't get healed. They prayed for me. Men of God pray fast, neither you, up and down. I couldn't get well until I heard you teach on sacrifice. He said, I decided to obey. He said, I came to our Anglican altar. And I went to my account, closed the account, and bought seven cow and seven, seven rams seven cow and seven rams he said i package it in money in different envelopes seven envelopes 14 envelopes together seven cow and then they were selling cow 150 or so so 150 into seven and eighty thousand for ram into seven so he packed it like that came to the altar and said to god god if you are real take sacrifice seven cow and seven ram heal me i'm tired of sickness he said he got home that night and just visited him there are some sacrifices you do heaven we move he's a man of god not just that i got healed my business had a 360 degrees turn around i said to somebody yesterday that came to see me the only valuable thing you have in your life is your car he said i said give it to god go with leg uh, <laughs> hey, <Jesus Christ. laughs> the man looked at me i said that is the most valuable thing the devil has so dealt with you you don't have money you don't have your connections are dead nothing is working all those who are you are not paying even the property you want to sell is not selling the only valuable property you have is your car donate it everywhere is quiet reverend what is it now there is covid and sars <laughs> For that reason, thank God for you. He that withholdeth shall come to poverty. But he that releaseth increaseth. He that scattereth increaseth. But he that withholdeth, the Bible says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands, and poverty will come upon you like a bandit, and scarcity like an armed man. <laughs> Don't, where am I come? Let me demonstrate. If I come, let me demonstrate something here. Both of you come to me. Amos, you do a ministry now. Come to face congregation. Close your two fists. Present it before me. Amos, give me Bible. Let's demonstrate. He has closed his hand. He that withhold it. Let's see how much you can carry. Give me Bibles. Uncle, give me load. Give me the one from the altar. Give me. If it's about to fall, tell me, be sincere. He folded his hand. He don't want to give. He don't want to spend on God or on anybody. I don't have. What is happening? Could he hold it? Why? He has withheld. He can't carry the blessing. Those who are stingy cannot carry the blessing for a long time. You didn't hear what I said. Stretch your palm. Hold it together. Watch this. Watch the balance, the alignment. <sighs> Today's fellowship, some of you may not like it. But for me, it is the very best that will change your story. How do you feel? Very relaxed. Very comfortable. Celebrate Jesus, somebody. Very comfortable. Very comfortable. How did you feel? Not convenient. Not convenient. Not convenient. Not balanced. When you fold your hands against God and against people, the blessing will come but you can't you can carry it for long it will fall off but when you are liberal 
he that scattereth increases. Give me more. More Bible. Bring more. There is balance. More. More. There is balance. Now, let's. You are feeling heavy, isn't it? Let's deliver you. Do you need deliverance? Yes. He that scattereth is more comfortable. He that what? Scattereth is more blessed. Yes. Come on, be taking your own. Somebody is just, this man is just getting okay. Very comfortable. Mm -hmm. okay, are you okay? You are getting very comfortable? Because you are distributing. <laughs> Uh, what I'm preaching may not sound too sweet But it is the will of God Stingy people here will not be happy <laughs> He that scattereth Increase it Stand on your feet, put your hand like this Say he that scattereth Increase it if you are still sitting down, I lose you from sitting syndrome. Say, He that scattereth, increase it. He that withholdeth, come to poverty. Take your seat. I'm about to stop. But hear this God is willing to increase you if you are willing to invest on Him without looking back. Why will I say so? The money you are looking for is not in the hand of God. It's in the hands of men. It's men that are holding your money. Four of you come, three of you come again. I demonstrate this and I pray and go. Where is a... Uh, where is a... Uh, uh, uncle, both of you come. Three of you, come. Three of you, come. Watch us. Watch this drama. And don't forget it, even if you forget all I have said now. Don't forget this one. Um, you must come over here. Okay, become Jehovah. Go and stand there behind them. Come closer. Come and become born again. Who came to church? Come and stand here. Face them. Watch the drama. How many of you want God to lift you up financially? Look at the way it works. The Bible said, Give, and it shall be what? Given to you. He didn't say, Born again, give. He didn't say, Child of God, give. He simply said, Give. Everybody can give, and it will be given back. Go to God in His throne and give Him what you have. Go, go and give Him. He's given to God now. Come back to where you are. He has given has he yes god come and give it back to him and it shall be given back to you after giving him you go back to your throne and relax there <sighs> the connection has been established the connection has been what he has given to god and god has given to him and god will go back to his throne if this man remains faithful to God and continue to be committed in because giving is a lifestyle, it's not a one-off thing. Somebody say it's a continuous, it's a continuous thing. But God will keep blessing you every day. So if you are waiting to have too much, you will never do it. Start doing it when you don't have anything. Now he has given, and anything you give to God, he will give it back to you. God does not need what you are giving, he wants to prove your obedience and how much you love him and trust him. God does not need your money. He needs your obedience and love. Am I communicating here? You've given him your life. He gave you salvation. You gave him money. He has also blessed you. But when God bless you, it doesn't stop there. But the blessing of God, the real blessing of God is called overflow. Oh my God. Can you stand up and shout overflow three times? One to go. One. Two. Three. Take your seats. The real blessing is overflow ss god wants you to have what ss ss that's the will of god he said he said if you give to god 
they will give back to you and go back to his throne then god will now look at you if you if you remain faithful god come if you remain faithful and remain committed to god in righteousness in giving in service to god and humanity he will give you good measure send him good measure good measure okay collect no 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 good measure is your own you remain faithful committed to god dedicated he will give you pressed down you keep giving you did not stop he will give you shaking together and you continue to give without stopping he will give you running over god stand here now all these things he gave you he said shall men pour into your bosom not shall god if you are rich towards god god will command men to give you your own i don't know i'm communicated here in this city of our nature there are people who are rich and don't know what to do with their money when you are rich towards god god will command those men to release your own for you a customer can come to your shop and buy for six million naira in one day it's very possible now even if your shop is at the back of the market even if your business is hidden because you are wealthy towards god he will provoke men to remember you it is in the hands of men that good measure pressed down shaking together are in the hands of men but if you provoke god god will provoke men to release your own i said say, stand on your feet and say it as we as we conclude if you provoke god by your giving god will provoke men to release resources to you the best time to give to god is when you don't have you didn't hear me the best time to give to god is when what when there is scarcity when you don't have that's the best time when you are lacking that's the best time to give because when you have enough and you give you will feel it you will feel it but when you give when you don't have it will touch you and the more it touches you the more it provokes heaven about you guys go and sit down hear this as we pray hear this as we pray one man very rich man sit down one very rich man harvested so much in a year he harvested what so much in a year and he his wealth was too much the bible say he knocked down the old store and built a new store and furnished it with everything good and he said to himself my soul rest you have so much in store to enjoy relax and have merry the bible said that night god came and said to him you fool anybody who store up money but is not rich towards god and his kingdom or helping humanity is a fool that's what the bible said god said you fool tonight i will demand your life from you let me know who will enjoy all these things you have packed for yourself and the lord said jesus said so shall it be with he who is not rich towards god let god take a better part of your life you are better for it am i communicating here during my ministration some sundays ago in church i asked these questions and i'm going to ask you as i conclude when you have money to build a fine house did god benefit from that house answer me who benefited you if you have money to buy a fine car and you are driving the car is god enjoying the car who is enjoying the car you if you have money to send your children to the best school and they go to the best school and you pay the highest money and they do good in school and graduate did god enjoy who enjoyed the whole process if you have money to to sew fine clothes and put on and you appear fine and good and some women who are very rich we go and buy hair hair for three hundred thousand here for one million naira who is enjoying it who is looking good is god enjoying it if you have enough money to go and buy diamond ring 
Diamond ring for 2 million naira. This one I saw the other day. Diamond ring for 2 million naira. And you buy diamond ring and wear on your finger. Who is enjoying the diamond ring? Is God enjoying? Now, the day you leave the planet Earth and appear before God in heaven, what will you tell him you did with your life on earth? You can't say, God, God, good evening. <laughs> I just arrived from Onicha, <laughs> from earth. You know now, <laughs> God, you see, I had four children and I trained all of them in Harvard University. God, you see, and me, eh, I built a mansion for 400 million naira. Oh, I enjoyed my life. God, you see, eh, I bought Lamborghini. It was a real cruising. God, you see, eh, you see, I had a wedding and I did my wedding with 100 million naira. Oh, even the governor came. <laughs> even the governor came. God, God, you don't understand, eh? God, eh, hey, God, I enjoyed it. Eh? <laughs> but on Sundays, <laughs> I used to give you off. I used to buy your offering, <laughs> one five. You know, your Sunday offering is one five. And when I come to fellowship, sometimes I will even give one thousand. I, I was trying, you know, <laughs> I was trying, God, God, I was trying. And when I was on earth, uh, God, uh, the best teller, Givenchy, all the designers. <laughs> but when they want to do crusade, I used to give the hundred thousand. I was trying, you know, <laughs> I was trying, you know. God will say, Gabriel. Yes, my Lord, remove this animal. Because all he did was for self. I, me, myself. Just like Nigerian politicians used to say, get what you can, can what you get, and sit on the can. Anybody who wants to unseat you, kill him. That's Nigerian political philosophy for so many politicians. They used to say it. Get what you can. Can what you get. Sit on the can. Anybody want to unseat you? Wasting. Selfish. Selfish. Some of them are very selfish. God wants you to lavish your best on him. Ah, should God say to you, thank you? Talk to me. Should God say thank you to you? For that little little change you are giving him. Have you ever seen somebody who went and bought a car, a very fine car, for five million naira, and came back home and said to the wife, <laughs> "I went and wasted my money. I went and wasted my money. Whatever it be, talk to me." Somebody built a house with hundred million naira, and on the day of dedication, he said to the priest. Priest, I'm very sorry. I should not have this kind of house. I'm a foolish man. Oh. I'm a foolish man. Oh. But when it comes to doing it for God, our selfish being shows up. I told you anybody who says he comes from God but is not a giver, he didn't come from God. Why? Everything that comes from God is a giver. You didn't hear what I said. The earth came from God. If you plant anything, he gives you in multiples air come from god somebody breathe in out again out out is the air complaining god the owner is he complaining in a corona you think you are the owner of this ones you are collecting sun and moon came from god they give light water came from god we drink it for survival trees came from god we eat their fruits and we use their branches for other things and no tree has ever complained the earth we till it and fertilize it has never complained we manure the earth we deal with the earth it has never complained hmm? chicken uncle birds do we eat birds we eat birds, chicken, or gas, or what? Tolo, tolo. They're all birds. We consume. Go to unko. Bush meat, unko. They are all givers. Only man. Only man is stingy and selfish. Man is the receiver. You keep receiving. Man don't want to give. So a proof that you love God is your giving life 
if you love God too much. That is why even when unbelievers give too much, God will make sure they become born again before they die. I'm telling you what I have seen happen. Unbelievers who don't know God, who are not born again, there's a way they will be philanthropic. An example is Cornelius in the Bible. Cornelius was not born again. But God said to Peter, go to the house of Cornelius and preach to him to repent. That the way he is giving to the poor and needy and to my work has come before me as a memoriam. Every giving come before God as a memoriam. Do you know in heaven there's a record for giving? One day that book will be opened for remembrance. Am I communicating here? Because Cornelius has given his way, even though he was not born again, he has given his way into the heart of God. God had to send Peter, even though it was unlawful for a Jew to go to a Gentile. He had to go. And the story of that man changed. Look at what happened. Paul was still preaching. Before he could make contact call, they received the Holy Ghost. But the atmosphere was right. An atmosphere of giving is a ripe atmosphere for the move of the Spirit of God. But where sacrifice occur, the Spirit passes through it. If you offer sacrifice of praise and worship and prayer and giving, you provoke the Holy Ghost to go through your territory. Stand on your feet, let me go. So if you provoke God through prayer and praise and righteousness and giving, the Spirit of God we pass through your environment the holy ghost will move through your environment i had a crusade somebody those days that ipad was very very rare i traveled to preach in the cameroons somebody gave me an ipad he bought in us i cherished it so much and god said to me this ipad is not your own one of my sons a pastor a foreigner in nigeria living in cross river state has asked me for it drive to cross river state and look for him and give it to him i drove from Onitsha hours to calabar to go and look for a man i will give what i like when i got there they were having convention i said sir i came from Onitsha. i was instructed by god to give this to you they give it to me in Cameroons. And God said, I should give it to you. And I don't know you. He said to me that he has prayed for this for a long time. I said, here is your answered prayer. He took it from me and he said to me, what do you need? I said, I have. I said, I only want to go to 50 countries before I'm 50 years preaching the gospel. He said, I have gone to more than 70. He said, lie down. I lied down. If you see prayer, bros, now nah, there is prayer and there is prayer and there is prayer. He so prayed for me. By the time I got up, I went and looked, I looked for him the first day. I didn't find my lodge in the hotel alone, and found him the next day. It wasn't a joke. I spent money to go and give. Now, by the time I got up from the floor, he said to me, I'm having a convention. A lot of people came from abroad. Can you come and preach? I said, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't come to preach. I came just for you to pray for me and give you this gift i jumped inside my car and drove all the way back to the city immediately i returned one month after doors began to open there is a way you provoke somebody heaven will move on your behalf everything that comes from god is a giver start giving listen to me to be rich is to reach everybody look at your neighbor say to be rich is to touch god and touch humanity if you have one billion naira in the bank and somebody have two million naira in the bank and that one that have two million is supporting the work of god and touching the life of people you that have two billion is poor and you are a fool that's what the bible said hello hear this statement as i pray there are people that have so much to live on so much to live on so much where to live on but nothing to live for what are you living for ask four persons that question what are you living for whose life are you touching whom are you changing his or her life how are you supporting the work of god 
shout it loud whom are you living for Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I'm feeling God already in my spirit. He's so strong. Look at you, come. Come. He's been my friend since our seminary days. He's a good brother. I came with this wristwatch to church. I make it your own now. Now, take it. From the moment he leaves me, from the moment he left me to him, wristwatches are on the line coming to me. That's the, I just became a rich man. Thank you, sir. Thank you for accepting it. If anybody accepts your gift, you should thank the person. The person is making you richer. When we were downstairs, before we came up here to worship, somebody who is a member of this church came to worship in our church. During the worship, he left the underground and came up here. That time, we've not even done roofing of this church. He came and looked at the altar and made up his mind to put all the marble here, up and down. After service, he came and said, Reverend, follow me. He said, Reverend, my business is having too much problem. A lot of shaking in my business. Things are not working well again. But before the money we finish, let me use the remaining one to fix this altar. It was, these things, brethren, are millions. This is a very costly. You know granite. How much, and color granite like this can cost. This one, very costly. He spent a fortune. A fortune to put it somebody saw it happening now this time a member of my church he said man of god how can i be here and a stranger will take the main blessing of the altar that will last for generations no way i will take the rail one of my sons in the lord said to me who please man of god have they taken the altar table i said they say that one not my own one of them came and said quietly what of the bishop's throne i want to put the bishop's throne don't tell anybody hello another one came one woman came secretly and said to me what of the altar flower have they taken the flower i said they say i'm important <laughs> this one came from abroad <laughs> a member of winners said to me what of the altar light the light in the altar have they taken I said no he took money sharp sharp went and bought this one this one came from winners <laughs> a winner member said since your members don't see they don't have spiritual eye can I put light in your altar and carry the blessed Quietly, <laughs> secretly, give me now my fair, my be fair. Somebody whose wife was not having baby said to me, "Can I take where they read the Bible?" I said, "Take." Immediately he did it. The wife, gave, the wife gave birth to a boy. Somebody said to me, "Have they taken the pulpit where the preaching will be done?" I said, "No." That man and the wife said don't tell anybody don't even mention it if the other person come tell them it is you are sorry you are sorry that it has been taken quietly and my wife said to me since they have taken everything can i put the flowers <laughs> let god see my own too I announced in this place somebody should take the center chandelier i announced and announced and announced and announced somebody secretly came one day and said Shh, the money i have is not enough but don't worry 
Just give me some time. Somebody who live in three three hmm? said, Reverend, they need to be TV in this church. They need to be TV. So that when they are video making video recording, somebody can be watching. He went and bought this thing. Six pieces. Six, six pieces. <sighs> it's only one person that bought this one. Okay, one more person joined him and bought one. All the things you are seeing, somebody secretly, wildly, quietly, not because he was rich, he's a man of God. I'm a go maybe see a believer, man. One of my sons abroad said to me, You are putting rug. I said, He said, That rug, my money go enter. Part of this money came from abroad. Hmm? You think God will leave them? All of you were aware. One Sunday morning, this man that did all that came to give testimony. He said, I don't know you can be a millionaire in less than one year. He doesn't pray for money. He said, Money, he prays for him. Don't wait until you have everything. Some of them that gave, when the man was doing this altar, he had no money. In, he said, the money in business is finishing. Let me spend the rest on the altar and be empty-handed. Let's go. And today's preaching, no, no ride on. No praise the Lord. I do go mdi ibo nebo na hakeha. I want to go my red-handed you must go away from yourself and focus on the kingdom that's the secret two prayer points i will pray i will leave you i didn't come to raise money today you think i'm going to ask you to come and give i said i didn't come to raise fund i want you to i want to change your heart change your life towards god let god enjoy the better part of you the better part of you say to god look god one man said to me reverend there is this rug they used to put in the altar has anybody taken it i said no he went and he went and brought the rug he's a rug dealer rug dealer if i when i was building prayer city he said to me she they never put rug now me go they put the rug <laughs> i want to enter he's a man of god i want the grace that follow you he's a man of god people don't even know anytime they gather to pray that altar becomes the spiritual center Everything that happens there will affect those who invested in that church. But many people don't know. One of my sons said to me, when there was a hit of COVID, there was no money. He said, Daddy, I want to put 10 pews in this church. In this year, there is no money. He went and built 10 pews and put. If I tell you what is happening in his life now, you become jealous. In COVID, he built 10 pews. 600,000 naira and put in church. 10 pews. In COVID. In COVID. Ah. Look for three persons that came to church. Say to each of them, lavish your best on God and expect the unusual. Say to three persons, lavish your best on God. Stand on your feet. As in you get up. Look at three persons. I'm about to close this service. Lavish your best on God and expect the unusual. Lavish your best on God. Man of God, but I have been giving, giving, giving. Oh, I don't have any breakthrough. It's a lie. You can't give. Maybe the major one has not come, but God has been sustaining you. Am I communicating here? It, is your, it was your giving that brought you to the level where you are today. If you stop sacrificing, you are sure to go down. Lift your two hands. Two prayer points. First prayer point is, Lord. Oh, my father, say, Lord. As I raise my two hands in church today, whatever hinders me from being a giver, let it be taken away from me. Say so that, Father, every spirit of selfishness 
and pride and arrogance let it die in my life don't need your prayer pray seriously about it every spirit you will not pray some of you are not praying every spirit of selfishness self-centeredness pride arrogance let it die in my life some of you are not praying if i ask you to bind devil now you start shouting this is a, this is a bigger devil you need to bind it's a more wicked evil spirit self me i pride arrogance any self any form of self and pride and selfishness and arrogance and stingy spirit let it die completely let it get away from me i want to be as liberal as ever as free as ever after the day you die you will not live here with anything you came empty you are leaving the planet with nothing except your salvation and what you did for god and humanity thank you father in jesus christ's name let me hear you shout the loudest amen in the house open your eyes look at prayer point number two i have said while we're praying the day you die you will live here with nothing say that to your neighbor honoria whether you have the best cars the best houses the best gold the best diamond the day you drop dead you are not living here with anything i don't even know who will take them after you go am i communicating here such a neighbor what really matters is your investment towards god and towards humanity shout it loud what really matters is your liberality your sacrifice towards god and towards humanity lift your two hands i'm going to pray that prayer say father give me the grace to be liberal and selfless and sacrificial don't need your prayer ask for that grace wherever you are the grace of giving if you don't have it giving will be an uphill task very difficult the grace of giving if you don't have it there is a limit to which you can operate in the things of god say father give me a liberal heart give me a liberal soul for a liberal soul shall be made fat and he that watereth shall be watered a liberal soul shall be made fat and he that watereth shall be watered a liberal soul shall be made fat and he that watereth shall be watered a liberal soul shall be made fat and he that watereth shall be watered thank you father in jesus powerful name we pray say equality amen if you believe in the utterances you made look up here as we close i want to really go home and go and think about this these are the ones you give to you provoke radical blessing number one give to god number two give to men of god number three give to the orphan the widows the orphans the widows and strangers who are stranded orphans widows and strangers who are what stranded assist it provokes blessing from heaven now also give to the aged aged women aged men who has nobody to help them aged men aged women who have nobody to help them assist them support them and heaven will move on your behalf how many persons i said that provoke blessing number one you give to god majorly number two giving to god means supporting the work of god in church investing in the kingdom of god investing in crusade in church building and all of those number two is giving to men and women of god giving to them because if you give to a prophet you will receive the reward of a prophet now number three give to orphans and widows and then to strangers who are what stranded then also give to aged men and women who are hopeless and wretched and poor and nobody can support them help them and heaven will move 
on your behalf. Don't give money to Ndara, mad people. Don't drop money to beggars on the road. Because where you drop your resources is where your blessing will come from. You can drop money. Instead of dropping money for people who are begging on the road, buy them food. Don't throw your money where you are not sure of. Am I communicating here? Mad people, mad people can carry demons in excess. When you give mad people money, you are dashing money to evil spirits. Buy food for them. Let me say this to you. Go to any madman, mad woman you know. Buy them, a, buy them bread. They will take it and throw it back at your face. Those demons will not demand for food. They will demand for money so that you can open a door. They can enter and afflict you. You didn't hear what I said. Those people who are begging along the road, did you know what brought them to that position? No. Go and buy food, buy biscuits, buy mineral for them. Don't give them your money. Why? Your money is what took a better part of your life to manufacture. Best of your brain gets money. Best of, best of your strength. So if you are giving money, you are giving the best of your life. Am I communicating here? Don't throw it anyhow, wherever you like. Don't throw it anyhow. Buy them food. Buy food for them. Anybody you are not led to, to give your money, buy food and give the person. Oh my God, I don't know what I'm communicating here. Buy food and give those ones. And most times, if you, those ones who are begging on the road, if you give them food, they will refuse. Because they want, because anywhere you release your money, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Once you release your money, a gate has been opened. It's not even every motherless baby's home you go to. Any motherless baby's home you want to go to, be sure it's a real one. Some of them are into bad bees. I don't know what I'm communicating here. Finally, put your hand this way. That's the last thing as we go. Say, Father, as I give, I shall never go down. As I give, I shall never go down. Lord, as I give, I shall rise above my troubles, above my reproach. If you believe it, say amen three times with faith, wherever you are. Sit down. We are leaving in five minutes or six. If you were blessed today, celebrate Jesus if you are really blessed. Oh my God. Some of you, you are waiting until you fall under anointing. Thank God for you. But listen, if you were really blessed, celebrate Jesus wherever you are. Hallelujah. This morning, I'm not calling any amount. If you feel like you want to give, come and let me pray for you.